Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham! Presents with me, your host, Valerie. And we at ComedyWham.com are your place to go for features about all Austin comedy, including, as in the case of today's interview, those who are making a stop through Austin to do spots. And this uh, on the street interview is with somebody that I've admired for many, many years. And I was uh, feeling very fortunate that he agreed to sit down with me between two shows that he was headlining at the Velveeta Room last weekend. Uh, We bring you articles and podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. The podcast project began in early 2016, and we love interviewing funny people and sharing their stories. I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations, and we'll sometimes take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And rather than the traditional closing that I like to do, I'm just going to do some of that up top. I uh, hope you you enjoy listening to our guest. He was more real than I could have imagined in this interview. And if you've listened to his podcast or, or his guest spots on other podcasts, seen his stage show, you know that uh, he's he's pretty wild. Uh, anyway, he he by all accounts to me, has has definitely earned his his mark as a comedic genius. Uh, please be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at ComedyWham and like our Facebook page. You can listen to past interviews on Stitcher, Google Play, and iTunes and review us while you're at it. And now it is time to go out on the street at the courtyard of Esther's Follies slash the Velveeta Room for today's Amazing, amazing interview. Frame of mind, I need to. All right, cool. Today I sit down with a legendary Austin comedy alumnus. He's the 2004 winner of FPIA, who frequently returns to Austin to perform at Moon Tower Comedy Festival or to headline the Velve. He's been on so many Comedy Central TV shows that if I listed them all, the list would be its own episode. I'll just tell you, three of them include Drunk History, The Dearly Departed at Midnight, and one of my favorites, Another Period. And as soon as I tell you which legendary podcast he co-hosted with his twin brother, you'll have narrowed it down even more. He's taken a break from it since he and his twin just got picked up to star in Comedy Central's new show, Weird Uncles. The podcast, by the way, is the incredibly insane, charming, and wickedly funny The Bone Zone. And now Comedy Wham! presents our guest, Brendan Walsh. Crowd. I have a new Cheers. podcast too called. Uh, I was know gonna, I was gonna ask okay. you. My icebreaker is, uh, Brendan. Do you happen to know who Jason Siegel is? I do. The yeah. actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only people who know this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, while I was waiting to talk to you, I was like, okay, I gotta. It's D Y K W J S I. I was like trying to make sure that it's I could. Just, yeah, yeah, it is hard. <laughs> Well, I actually do, do start with a, a formal icebreaker question, yeah. and that is one word to describe your past. One word? Oh, I don't know. Uh, one word. Um, uh, I need more than one word. <laughs> uh, in the past, it's, I don't know, nor uh, unique. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoa, the table. Did yeah. I just do that? Oh. It's all right. It's yeah. Uneven surface. Yeah. Well, I'm catching you here as you're headlining the Velve, which you know, obviously, this is not going to go out before everybody can sell out your 11 o'clock show. Which right. are, it's already sold out, right? I mean, I this don't think one the shows, 11 o'clock is. Well, it should be. The it's nine doing o'clock okay. was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that people will walk up. Yeah. I think I, the 11 o'clock show is like people kind of call an audible. Yeah. Like, well, maybe we'll go. We'll uh, see. You know, 11. It's kind of. I wouldn't want to make that commitment too far in advance, you know. You might get tired and you don't want to go well, out. Yeah, but I mean, I think the Austin community generally really likes you coming into town. I, your shows fun. are are always seeming to do well when I go yeah. see them. So. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, you have been incredibly busy since you, uh, since you won FPIA in 2004. And I was... I almost overheard what you were saying to some friends who, who were chatting with you uh-huh. that you moved to L.A. in 2009. Yeah. Is that 
So that's almost, uh, well, that's eight years. And since then, you've just, you've done a lot of writing. You've done mm -hmm. a ton of, of acting. Um, so I tend to ask about the past, but I just, I kind of want to focus on when you, when you won that FPIA, uh -huh. what did you imagine the possibilities were with that? I did it. I mean, I, I think I probably thought, I don't know. I, uh, it was just something that you just want to do when you're here doing comedy. It's like, yeah. well, I'll go and win that contest. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really, it's a great contest as yeah. far as, like, the first time I did it was 2002. And uh, they get good judges to come out. Yeah. Like, there's people from Comedy Central and, like, uh, there was the guy who was booking Kimmel at the time, and so you kind of get on people's radars. Like I don't, yeah. I think that's pretty unique, the place outside of LA or New York. Yeah. And why, for you, did you decide to do LA when you grew up in Phil in the Philadelphia area? You could have gone to New York, closer yeah. to home. What was it about LA that drew you? Um, New York is like it just seemed more like I was out here for so long I was here for like 10 years yeah so I kind of got used to the like pace of life and having space I just didn't really want to live in a place like New York you're never further away than like two feet from another person right you know? and also LA just has way more opportunities like New York you can go if you just really want to like just do stand up you go to New York because yeah. you can like get on stage ten times a night if you want to do that. But LA just has like every TV show is made in LA. You can pitch shows. You can yeah. you can get. I, I do like I like doing stand up, but you know I want to have my own show or or just like get like there are just so many weird opportunities that have come up. Mm -hmm. Like the world's dumbest show that I was doing for like three or four years was like. Stuff like that doesn't really... Well, I guess they did that in New York, too. But there's just more stuff like that. We're like, oh, I got this weird job that yeah. only takes up like a couple days a month and pays me enough to pay my rent. Mm -hmm. um, so that was it. And also, like, having more space and the weather is like... That's another thing when I moved here from Philadelphia. Oh, I sure. moved here in, like, January of 1997. And it was like the night... The last night I had in Philly was like, like zero degrees and like all the sidewalks were frozen. And yeah, miserable. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> want to. I don't want to deal with harsh sure. winters. And then, and even here, like the summers are so brutal. Um, it was like, well, LA. It's like the weather's nice. Yeah. And I knew more people there too. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, and and everybody that moves to New York winds up in LA eventually hmm. every like you know like Rory Scoble and like Kumail and Joe DeRosa like there are all these New York guys like yeah. people always have a chip on their shoulder and they're like oh fuck in yeah. New York's <laughs> better but it's like you're gonna wind up here if you yeah. have a career outside of being on the road for a year yeah. so do you I, I know right now you're in the middle of a tour is that no nope. uh, you're not just so you just it. oh okay I didn't realize that. For some reason, I thought you were promoting other shows. Um, I did a thing. I toured with, uh, like, September. I was on the road with okay. Doug Stanhope. Okay. Yeah. But, no, this is this is it. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, so do you prefer the writing, the acting, or the stand-up? Or are they all your, your favorite children? Yeah, I mean, I like doing a variety of things so mm -hmm. and the stand-up I was on the road for 10 years yeah. pretty much that was like my main source of income mm -hmm. and unless you achieve some kind of like real success at it it just gets really tiresome and it's a real yeah. grind like unless you're I just didn't really you know I mean these shows are great but it's like it's a small room you sell out yeah. three shows I'm not you know, I thought that probably around this time I could be selling out, like, I don't know, just making more money at it, yeah. like, you know, doing bigger venues, and and it just doesn't work out that way yeah. for everyone, so I don't want to be on, be gone 40 weeks a year just to make a decent living. Yeah. 
and you're in the right spot to make connections for writing and, and acting opportunities yeah. that that help fill out that income. Yeah, well, yeah. that helps with the stand up too. Like if you know, like if this Comedy Central show works out, and when I go to do a show here, it won't be at the Velveeta Room yeah. probably. It'll you know be at a larger venue and yeah. just do one show and make you know five times the amount of money. Right. It, it was funny watching watching you uh, tonight because I, I I you know heard the news about the com- the new Comedy Central show and he, you have this bit about the baby uncle and I thought oh he's he's kind of teasing the show to those people who oh. happen to be who happen to know you didn't even make that connection did no, you? No, <laughs> I never yeah because it's not like I think the baby uncle thing was an idea before the yeah. show was even yeah an idea. Uh-huh. I just think it's funny to have, because I, I don't know at what age, I just, I don't know, I just thought it'd be funny for like a 40 year old guy, yeah. or like just having yeah. a pregnant grandma, <laughs> you'd have to be right. really young for that to happen, like there's probably some people, like I have an uncle who's 10 years older than me, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, like, there's no connection, <laughs> yeah. something like that, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so I'll slip a little bit into fangirl mode because I'm sure tons of people who are going to listen to this, they're going to be fans of the Bone Zone. Yeah. And I I will just fess up and be honest that I was really, really nervous about this interview because the Bone Zone and even do you know who Jason Siegel is? Like, you're a character <laughs> on those. And I'm like, am I going to get the character or am I actually going to get Brendan? And I'm really happy you're getting... I don't think it's a character, really. No? I mean, no, I'm just like, I mean, it's a pretty juvenile yeah. version of myself, but yeah. I'm not like, it's not like I get into a character. It's like we're yeah. playing with the phone and making noises. Yeah. Like it's, it's like when you're like 10 years old and you're just like mm-hmm. making a weird, t- you know, have a tape recorder yeah. with your friends and you're making part noises yeah. you know, <laughs> just to crack yourself up. Yeah. How, when did the Bone Zone start? Uh, six and a half years okay. around four or yeah. And you're, it's not done, right? You're just taking a break. Uh, no, I think it's done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, I don't know, I've, I've listened religiously for the last three years, and uh-huh. I, either I totally blanked out or <laughs> the last episode didn't make a fanfare. Did I, do I need well, to re-listen? it wasn't really <laughs> planned. Like, it was just, you know, uh... I mean, if it were up to me, we'd still be doing it, yeah. but, like, Randy didn't want to do it, and if, you know, we're both not into it, it's just yeah. not going to be good, and I think even the last few episodes kind of showed that, like, mm-hmm. I was like, I used to look forward to this, and now it's, like, not as uh. fun, and that's really, we weren't, like, making a ton of money off the yeah. podcast so it's like if we're not having fun that's really all I was getting out of it so yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, but you're collaborating on this new yeah. show yeah. Uh, do you want to I mean you're I mean you're almost like a poster boy for Comedy Central shows the number of Comedy Central shows that you've done is pretty impressive yeah. and it's kind of cool to see the you know, from the podcast to this this show, do you want to tell us about Weird Uncles? Uh, well, it's just, you know, we still have a long way to go before yeah. it's even, we don't even, you know, it's not definitely okay. going to be a show yet. Um, but it's a good idea, It's be, and if we shoot it, we'll shoot it here in Austin. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that a... Like a girl who's going to college, like lives in New Jersey or whatever. She wants to go to UT, but she can't afford it. Um, she has like a dead dad who she didn't really know. And he's from here and her uncles still live here in like their grandma's house. Grandma's not in the show for now, but uh, yeah, so she's like, I can move to Austin, get in-state tuition and a free place to live. And basically has to move in with the, like, did you ever see the movie Step Brothers? The Will I Ferrell? And, that's one of oh, the funniest okay. movies ever. Okay. Uh, oh, John C. Riley and Will Ferrell uh, play, like, 40-year-old okay. guys who's, like, Will Ferrell's mom marries John C. Riley's dad, or the other way around. Okay. 
and then they have to like <clears throat> live together and they just they're just like juvenile okay. I mean they're basically like retarded they did um, Talladega Nights together didn't they yeah yeah so that yeah that combination is pretty Step pretty Brothers good. is like one of the funniest okay. movies ever made like those guys it's really like the peak of yeah. those guys and so that's really what our characters are kind of okay. not like we're not ripping them off but it's sure. the same kind of like we're two 40 year old 12 year olds basically <laughs> and this girl has to kind of like you know she's trying to figure out who she is uh-huh. and like you know she came here to start over and like you know figure out college and figure out what she wants to be yeah while having to deal with, like, two overgrown idiots mm-hmm. who are, like, you know... <laughs> I can't want to give away too oh, much, but, like, oh, yeah, we're just not, doing, yeah. like, very uh, juvenile yeah. things. Like, on one of the it episodes, like, I find... Or Randy finds, like, a really cool yeah. stick, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm jealous of it, and I want the stick, and, and it just leads to, like, all this mayhem. Oh, yeah, just, the stick yeah. goes missing, and... Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. basically the idea for the show. Is it exciting, like, when you think about your your comedy career to be like in charge of a show that you? I mean, the possibility of it is very exciting. Yeah. I mean, I've been around long enough to know that. I mean, it's hard to not get too excited about these opportunities, but I've been down this road a yeah. few times yeah. already, and it's like there's just you know a lot of yeah. luck goes into these things mm-hmm. like you know by the time we have everything ready to go um comedy central might like they might not even be a thing you know yeah. like the like the landscape's changing so much or you know they could have a show that gets really popular and they're like okay we're just looking for stuff like this mm-hmm. we don't want two idiots uh-huh. and a college girl although i do think the show is very unique and has the potential to have like a, a really broad audience like, yeah. you know with the young girl who we don't really have anybody we have a few people in mind but uh, I think that if we have a really strong you know it's just hard to I'm just not in touch with like 19 year old yeah. uh, <laughs> female yeah. actresses right. and, and it has to be somebody with like a strong point of view and like yeah. a real character so yeah. but I think that it does have you know it's like it, it's just it's it's kind of set up to really just have some like you know young girl fans and then like guy fan I don't know yeah so it's not just giving a show to two 40 year old guys right. it's like that's not very marketable yeah so you throw like <laughs> yeah. a young kid in there maybe yeah. someone will watch it right? yeah. well speaking of a young kid uh, I think what's interesting about a lot of the comics that I talk to is most of them are not parents yeah and so there's like a certain uh, I mean I think you even just said the word the phrase a certain world view uh, to that and you you're a new dad yeah and have you found that that has changed I mean it's obviously changed your world uh, yeah. And I, I think I can speak for everybody that says we love your Instagram stories because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're all her. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, pretty cute. Yeah, uh, has that change started to change or changed your your comedy sensibility or just? Not really. I mean, you know, I don't. Were you at this show or at the first show? Yeah, tonight? yeah, tonight. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. I don't get yeah, super yeah, I don't, personal about like, and it, that's something that I'm thinking about is like I don't know I just feel like you're so like Bill Burr just had a kid like right less than a month before we did and I'm just self-conscious enough because like I know he's talking about it and Uh, like I'm friendly with him and his wife and and some people like I I haven't seen what he's doing but from what I hear it's like oh it seems like we have a very similar view of the whole thing yeah it's just kind of tough where it's like if Bill Burr is like this new dad Mm -hmm kind of talking about how it's like you know whatever not as like life-changing as, as yeah. you think it's going to be I don't know it's like how do you without sitting down and you know watching what he's saying about it before I go out because it's the worst oh. if you go up and someone's like oh Bill Burr has the same exact uh, mm. kind of take on new fatherhood and it's like well it's my own personal experience but also you don't want to be compared to a guy who's a thousand times more popular than you are Wow. I mean, there's ways to <laughs> do it, but I also am like, yeah, I don't know. My comedy's never been that, you know, 
real. Uh, yeah. Not really uh, talking uh, about like, oh, I have a new kid, and I just kind of feel like that's a little. I don't know. I just feel like you've heard it all like so many yeah, times. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, it's just hard to have like a really unique mm-hmm. take. Yeah. Um, like I'd rather talk about a fake baby uncle yeah. <laughs> than try and explore yeah. what's funny about fatherhood. Yeah. And for your fans, I think that we would expect the fake, you know, the baby uncle yeah. over, hey, you know, I changed my kid's diapers. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like there's a lot of basics that you're like, yeah, there's just shit everywhere all the time. And, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, there's a hundred cops. Everybody that has yeah. a kid, it's like kind of the same yeah, stuff right. everybody's dealing with. And if I'm not like itching the top, like if, you know, when we had the kid, I was like, oh, man, this is like, oh, every five seconds I'm, like, jotting things yeah. down. It would be different, but I'm like, oh, this is, like, just kind of a separate thing going on. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to uh, start winding us down uh, to since you've got another show that you're going to yeah. do yeah. soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what is, um, since you had such a, a wide experience in the comedy universe, have you have you had? Can you think about a light bulb moment where you knew that being a performer in the comedy world was like your place? Uh, no, I think it was kind of just an ongoing. Like mm-hmm. when I was a kid, you know, I always liked comedy and yeah. I always thought it would be cool. It was very mysterious to me, though. Mm-hmm. Like. You know, just growing up in a pretty basic family as far as, like, you know, just blue collar. Like, yeah. there was no... The whole idea of being like, oh, I want to be on Saturday Night Live someday or whatever. It was just like, well, that's impossible. Like, nobody really... There was no way to figure out how to do that. Yeah. Uh, but then when I moved here, I mean, that's kind of specifically why I moved here. Not for comedy, but I knew this was a great place yeah. to explore, like, you know, playing music or doing theater or, uh, you know, even visual arts or uh, playing comedy yeah. and, or filmmaking. Like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then, yeah, just finding out about open mics, I was like, oh, well, that's... Did you find that out in Austin? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought... I don't know why I thought this, but I thought you moved from Philadelphia specifically because you knew Austin had a, a No, I just knew, like, okay. I moved here with a friend of mine who, she had just bought a house here. She would spend summers here, and yeah. she would do these, like, weird puppet shows. Uh-huh. And so I was like, oh, wow, that's, like, you can do that here, where, yeah. like, Philly is not really... Yeah. It's just a very blue-collar, semi-closed-minded town. And, uh... So I would like do stuff with her. She would put on puppet shows, and I would do like an opening act mm-hmm. of like like this weird keyboard stuff, like very Andy Kaufman-ish type stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then did like these sketchy kind of improv shows where we showed videos and had like strippers, and they were like really popular. It was very short-lived, but it was a very popular thing. But then two of the guys that I was doing it with just kind of decided they didn't want to do it anymore and I was like well that sucks like and then I was like well stand up I can do that like and you don't have to really rely on anybody else like with the Randy thing like I want to you know it's like once you have someone else involved in what you're doing it's like a hundred percent more chance for chaos right um, which I was talking to that's actually I was talking to Duncan Trussell two nights ago and that's yeah. like lifted that phrase from him (laughs) because we were talking about like even the new Jason Siegel thing he's like well you're doing it with someone else again and like you should just do your own thing not that he's saying stop doing that but but it's true and I've been thinking about that too after starting the thing with Nick it's like well you know uh, basically this whole thing relies on Nick's interest in doing it or whatever happens with his career like I don't know who knows like once you are at the mercy of someone else's decisions and like you can get fucked over yeah. and uh stand up is like well I I can I'm the only person yeah. who can fuck myself over mm-hmm. and it was like kind of the easiest thing to do you just need ideas and uh you know a pencil to write them down sure. and then go on stage so it was like kind of the laziest thing 
really <laughs> to do because you know it's like oh I just have like this vague idea about yeah. a baby uncle and then I'll go on yeah. stage and figure it out and then you're like oh now I have like a five minute long thing that'll eat up you know yeah it's just all about like filling that time uh -huh. <laughs> wow uh, do you have a favorite thing and a least favorite thing about being a performer? Uh, having to do podcasts between shows <laughs> with people. <laughs> write you it's randomly like and say, look, I listened to this, watched <laughs> you on this, saw you at Moontop. <laughs> no, this is, uh, no, this is fine. I mean, they're, they're like, uh, actually, Neil, Neil Brennan had a tweet, and this is in no way, I'm not, like, shitting on doing this, this is fine. <laughs> but he had a tweet that uh, comes to mind a lot where it is because you get self-conscious about asking people to do your podcast yeah. because especially in LA like everybody's got a podcast right. and everybody's like and you know everybody's got their own life going on but mm -hmm. Neil's tweet was um, uh, will you do my podcast is the new can you drive me to the airport <laughs> yes, I, I think, think it's I've very <laughs> uh, really kind of hits the nail on the head right. a lot of the times because yeah. you do just have like a lot of people wanting to do, you know, yeah. do a podcast, and you're like, well, you know, I have, like, especially if you have your own podcast, mm -hmm. and, like, something else you do regularly, yeah. it's, it's a little tough. In L.A., I mean, here, it's fine. Yeah. This is, yeah. this well, is I'll never ask you again, Brendan. <laughs> never, no, no, ever yeah, again. it sounds <laughs> shitty. But it's, uh... Hey, it is going to be a badge of honor that you <laughs> shit on doing this podcast with me. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no real, like... <clears throat> I don't know, the downside of, there isn't, I don't know, I mean, there's like the general, like, um, I mean, just specifically the touring and traveling, Yeah. that's, you know, that's a bummer, but I do like hotel rooms, and <laughs> I like being able to go to cool places, and yeah. get paid to do it, um, unfortunately, there aren't like a ton of cool places, like, I mean, yeah. there's a lot in the country, but when I was on the road, all the time it's like yeah there's only one Austin there's like Austin San Francisco Portland Seattle yeah, yeah. Um, you know a few other places in the south but like a lot of times it's like you know Dubuque, Ohio Iowa. fucking <laughs> Indiana yeah. like the worst Ooh. fucking state on the planet yeah. right <laughs> all right so that's like that's probably the worst part yeah. is like being at a hotel on the side of a highway I actually cried at a place <laughs> Like five years ago, I was in, um, what the fuck is it? It's in Canada. The Comedy Cave is the name of the, uh, where is it? I don't know where it is. It's it's in Canada somewhere. Not in like Vancouver or Montreal. Uh -huh. It's like in a fucking, and I was there like in January or February. It was like negative 16 degrees. And the club did shows from Tuesday through Sunday. Ooh. So it was like Tuesday, Wednesday, wow. Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, one show, eight shows wow. in a fucking week. And it was like, the, the club was like attached to this travel lodge where you stayed. Oh, so no. you would like take the elevator down, which can be like, you know, convenient in some places, but also there was nothing to do there too. Mm -hmm. Like I would like, there's an Asian Chinese buffet across like this park, couple parking lots that I would like freeze my dick off <laughs> going over just to fucking eat. And then you're just kind of sitting in this like suicide room at a travel lodge. And it was like Thursday night. The shows were dismal too. Like there was like nobody there. It must have been January because there was still kind of like holiday parties, maybe it was like right before Christmas or right after, maybe it was December, um, but there were like Christmas parties, which is like the worst, where it's like an office of people, uh, and somebody's like, somebody oh, we're going to a comedy it, show, yeah. and it's like, well, not everybody's going to fucking like this comedy show, yeah. um, so there weren't a lot of people there, and it was, and I was like about to do, I was going to do something on TV, like the John Oliver stand-up thing or something. So I was trying to like figure out my act and like the shows were just so fucking awful. And it was just like fighting for your life, like drunk hecklers and shit. And like Thursday night after that show, it was like my third show, or maybe it was Friday. I don't know. 
one of the nights I realized, like, I'm not even halfway done for the week, and I just, like, started crying. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, like, grown man crying <laughs> at a travel. I mean, I wasn't, like, bawling, but it yeah. was just like, this sucks, man. It's sad. What am I doing with yeah. my life? Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that's definitely the worst, is, like, when you're stuck in a shitty fucking place, like, walking down. I was telling uh, my wife about... Uh, like the hotel. Either way, I was like, the only the hotel that I'm staying at here is like a nice place in a nice part uh, of town. And I just, I want, I was like, I'll even pay extra if there's like, if it's out of the budget for the club. Yeah. Because the, the worst thing is like, a lot of times you're at these clubs and the, like a cheaper hotel is going to be like just on the side of the highway. Yeah. And there's just something really shitty about like walking down the side of the fucking highway. Huh. Like, like when you're on the highway and you see people like walking along yeah. the side of it, you think like you're just like a transit. fucking homeless yeah. guy or something. And that's yeah, I was like, oh, just, when I go to Austin, I just the hotel can't be anywhere near I-35 yeah. because if I have to walk down the fucking feeder road yeah. or even a block, yeah. it's gonna bum me out. That's a that's a really wise lesson because there's a lot of local comics who're dabbling into touring. You know, there's small tours. It's like useful lesson from Brendan Walsh. Don't yeah. don't do one of those. Well, you don't really have a choice a lot of times because yeah, sure. the clubs get the hotel, and if you're like, I don't want that hotel. Sometimes though, I would say, you know, even if you're not making a ton of money, you know, if they will give you like, if you know you're going to be staying in a shitty hotel in a shitty part of town. Generally, they'll say, well, you stay there, or we'll give you, they'll do a buyout, they call it, and they'll be like, or we'll give you, like, $200, and you get your own yeah. place for the week. Yeah. And you might have to spend $100 out of your own pocket, but <laughs> You're gonna have to explain why that other it's worth it. Like, that's, <laughs> even, like, I mean, I was pretty broke for a while, yeah, so, like, $50 the here and there, there's, uh, $50 here and there can be a lot of money. But what I've realized is just like comfort and like flying where it's like, oh, I have a shitty seat way in the back of the plane. For $49, I could be sitting up in the front of the plane and it's worth it every yeah. time because when you're sitting in that seat in the back of the plane, you're just looking at the front and you're like, I would fucking pay $1,000 <laughs> to be sitting up there now. Like cutting those corners uh, just to save a few bucks when like your um, like self esteem is at stake, yeah. I think it's worth it. Yeah. And, like where it's yeah. like, well, this place was a hundred dollars cheaper, so I'm just gonna stay in a shitty days in, like at the intersection of two highways. But for that hundred dollars, which you know is like, you know, again, if you're totally fucking broke, a hundred yeah. bucks could be a lot. But I just think it's worth it. Like, yeah. Oh, I could be staying at like a decent place and the near things like I can go to a yeah, record yeah. store and a decent place to eat way better for the mental health and yeah, your ability to be good on stage too is if you're not you yeah, know, oh god yeah, yeah. If you're crying in a travel lodge <laughs> fucking an hour before you go on stage it's not not in the best mindset to yeah. go and be funny well the good news is despite that horrible awful yeah. night you stuck with it and that's yeah. you know the lesson for comics so, I'm going to ask you my final closing question so that you can get back uh, to, to killing for the next show. One word to describe your future. Why? What's the one word thing? I don't, it's it's so, my like, thing. It's my, I know. Uh, I don't know. It's, <laughs> okay. I, I mean, who knows? You can answer that. Yeah. You don't know. That's I can fair. get fucking run over. Oh, own, no. So. Uh, I don't know. Hopeful yeah. or... I mean, that's how, that's like yeah. something a loser would say, though. Oh, man. <laughs> I've had comics say it. They're not losers. Um, okay, I do have one more question. Brendan, do you happen to know where our audience can buy a waterbed? Yeah, waterbed <laughs> today in Tampa, Florida. I don't have to remember, but Google waterbed yeah. today. And listen to, do you know who Jason Siegel is for the whole backstory as to yeah. why why that question no was just beds, asked. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents. Brendan Walsh, tell us where we can find you on social media and your, your amazing on Twitter. Your, your multiple aliases. <laughs> <laughs> no, just me. 
Well, your 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 son and your ex-wife yeah. or your wife. I can't. My ex-wife got banned from Twitter. Forever, so <laughs> she's not on there harassing me anymore. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck on the project. Good luck Thanks. on this next show. And uh, you know, this has been Comedy Wham presents Brendan Walsh. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks.